following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Market Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN. Just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time, it's NVIDIA earnings, the main event as we await that after the bell. This morning, we're slightly in the red, negative by 11 in the S&Ps, down by about two-tenths percent. That's a one-minute chart. Let's put it back to a 15-minute for some context here. Last Friday, we hit about 5,060. We're about 80 points below that price level. You bounce right at the lows of intraday yesterday, pre-market. We hit a low of about 49.75. You see the lows yesterday, about middle of the day in the market. We're trading right now at 49.80, as I mentioned, down 11 points. That's about two-tenths percent in the S&P. NASDAQ 100, we're negative by 93. That's about half a percent, 17,513. Not quite back at the lows of yesterday, but boy, we had some accelerations to lower price within the NASDAQ. We'll jump over to that at one point. In terms of some of those moves, NVIDIA, one of them. The Dow right now, negative by 70 points, 38,572. You get the Russell, negative by eight points right now, trading just above 2,000. Crude, backing off a bit. We were at $78 and change yesterday. We just got below 76.50. Briefly, we're trading at 76.85. Crude down about 20 pennies right now. You jump to gold. Gold's been trading higher. Gold up a dollar this morning on the session at 2,041, we'll call it. Silver, not so much, right? We were talking about silver, man. Gold, yeah, it's only a dollar. Okay, but look at that chart of gold. Gold, right back pushing the highs of Tuesday before you sold off. You take a look at silver. And look at the difference in silver in terms of where you got just different action, right? There's your Tuesday action. You got well above and on Friday. Now we've backed off a bit to silver, trading at 23.11. Nonetheless, you jump over to notes and bonds. Delete that. And we're trading up by three points right now. Three ticks, I should say, in the 10-year. At 110.01, we got a 10-year yield of 4.26%. We got Fed minutes today as well. Um, Fed minutes this afternoon from the market. We'll see what they have to say if the market reacts. But it's interesting that no matter what happens, we got elevated premium, man. We got a VIX sitting at 16 plus. Look at that thing, how it ratchets up, right? Ratchets up. We're at 14 on Friday, Monday with the holiday. Tuesday, we come back to trading, and we're actually at a higher point, 16. I mean, you take a look at this thing on a daily. Uh, that's a four-hour. Take a look at this thing on a daily. We haven't been to this price level. You're going all the way back to the beginning of November, man, right? We're above any other high we've had. You see that spike high February 13th? What was that the CPI, CPI last Tuesday, I believe, where you got a little bit of exacerbated sell-off up to 18. The market clawed it back in the next couple of days, and we've sold off a bit since then. But nonetheless, the VIX sitting above 16. Pay attention to that one as we come into an important event. We got Fed minutes, as I mentioned. We got NVIDIA earnings, other companies with their numbers as well. You jump over the dollar index. Yeah, quite a little pullback from that spike high. We hit the 618, and since then we've rolled over a bit. The dollar right now, back to a five minute chart. You're trading lower off of that spike high we got at about four in the morning, Eastern time. You were above 104. Well, you're still above 104. You were above 104.20, and right now we're negative by about six pennies at 104.02 in the dollar index. And let's jump over to the main event of today. Could decide the entire market. And quite a precursor, you come into things down $62 from where you were trading at on Friday's open. Now, you jump over to the Analyze tab, folks. Thinkorswim platform. We'll talk to our man Kevin Hinks after the first break. It's great to know the type of volatility options are pricing in, even if you're not an options trader, right? Today's a great example of that. You jump over the NVIDIA option chain, okay? If you want to see what's priced into this equity for the move just on the earnings tonight, now these are going to need to reset, okay? These are priced as of the close of yesterday. You have volatility premium that's built into that from last night's close till this morning's open. So those numbers will change as of the open, let alone you have NVIDIA trading down another $12 on that open, okay? But nonetheless, this move up here is the expected move over the event. You're looking at about $67. But no matter what, if you want exposure through Friday, you're looking at about $72 in movement. Now, what's interesting is, right, you want exposure through this Friday, the implied move is $72 in either direction. 
You want an extra week, you go out to March 1st, $86. The reason why it's so big is because you got earnings tonight, right? So $72 is what they were pricing in as of the close of yesterday in either direction. Shouldn't be too surprising when all it takes is a little bit of selling to get a $40 move on the open, man. That was just remarkable in terms of the acceleration. You want to talk about a main event in terms of volatility. You know, November 1st, we're trading at 400. You just sold off from about 750. So keep that in context, man. The A to B, C to D would have pushed about 800 on this. You had a simple round number acceleration. Your A point was at around 100. Your B point was at around 500. You didn't quite get the pullback more than a 236. But nonetheless, your C point potentially 400, and that would have carried you all the way to, all the way to 800. You made it to 746. Um, maybe this earnings is that final acceleration. We will find out after the bell tonight on the video. You jump around to some of the other AI stocks. Microsoft shares. Quite a sell-off from the highs they've had as well. Let's put it on 30 minutes to get those highs. Yeah, from 421 down to 400, just like that, you give back almost 5%. You see the volatility on these equities, right? We're trading at 400. You're down about $2. Market's negative this morning. NASDAQ 100 down about 97 to kick things off. A little bit of anxiety coming into NVIDIA earnings. Microsoft trading a bit lower. You had Amazon trading lower yesterday as well. They clawed back some of that as Amazon up to about 169 so far this morning. You jump over to Google shares. Google basically flat. Apple used to call them the big dog. Not so much anymore. Let's jump around where we are. Apple shares. You're talking about a market cap currently sitting at $2.8 trillion. You jump over to Microsoft shares. We still above three. Not quite. 2.972. They give up the $3 trillion mark. The most remarkable part about all this is NVIDIA and where they fall, man. NVIDIA, $1.686 trillion, which has them competing with the likes of Amazon, which is now at 1.75. Google's right up there at 1.75, I believe, something like that, 1.76. Uh, NVIDIA dropping a bit after that sell-off yesterday, but right on par. Some of the biggest companies out there, Google, Amazon. You think about how much Google has been spending on AI, right? Think about that. How much money they've been putting into their AI developments. What about putting some money into those chips, man? It just seems remarkable that you put that much money, billions and billions of dollars, Google's putting into AI. I get it, but then all of a sudden, what happens? Well, if you wanted some appreciation in your market capitalization, which is built off profits, that's basically what these companies are doing, right? Boy, you talk about maybe that some of that spending should have gotten put, um, and yeah, they're not chip makers, okay? I get it. But boy, they're valued at $1.7 trillion right now. And just taking a look at where this thing has been from, let alone 2022, when you're at 100, okay? Let alone you back things up a little bit further than that. Google's been plowing money into AI for a considerable period of time. All right, and let's jump over to some of what the market will be looking for when it comes down to NVIDIA. Here are some of the numbers they're going to be looking for. All right, shares are up 40% this year. Revenue, $20.4 billion. This is a rundown of some of the high-level numbers to watch for today, according to analysts. $20.4 billion, okay? The company in November guided investors towards $20 billion, plus or minus 2%, Okay. 20.4 billion is the market number that they'll be looking for. They might be looking for more than that, the way that the stock has behaved. Net income, $10.8 billion. How's that for margins? You're, you got a $20 billion business every 90 days and you're pocketing more than 10 billion. Earnings, Elon will like that number, $4.20 per share based on GAAP. Stay tuned, folks. We got a lot to talk about this morning. We'll be right back with our man, Kevin Hinks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps down about 13 points right now, trading at 49.78. NASDAQ 100, we're off by 106. You jump over to NVIDIA shares right now, down about $13, coming into an important event after the bell for them. And to talk about some of this action, let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hicks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, right here on Tiger TV from the Schwab Network, Fast Market, with your host, Kevin Hicks, Tom White. Uh, and boy, we might see a fast market this afternoon on those NVIDIA earnings. We will find out. Kevin Higgs, good morning. Good morning, Kelly O'Brien. Yeah, it's NVIDIA Day. Just make it a national holiday because there is one name sucking all the oxygen out of this market right now, Tommy, and that's NVIDIA. So after the bell today, even though we're getting Fed minutes, even though we have some other news, no one cares, Tommy. It's going to be all about NVIDIA and their earnings and their ability to guide and and tell us what their expectations are for the future is competition anywhere is there any deceleration in growth uh there's a lot for them to talk about but i mean we talk a lot on fast market about high bars and low bars i can't even see this bar it's so high tommy uh, boy, the chart says it all in terms of, you know, just the run it's had. We all know it's amazing. I got it up here on the Thinkorswim platform, Kevin, even just on a five-minute basis. Uh, does yesterday spook you at all in terms of the sell-off that we saw, you know, right out of the gate? Boy, the, the moves in this equity have been fantastic um, on both sides sometimes, mostly to the upside until the last couple of days almost over the last few. But did you read anything yesterday? I mean, quite a drop-off yesterday. Can't fault anybody if they do a little bit of selling ahead of that number with the run that it's had. Um, does that tilt the scales in either direction or just kind of volatility as we come into this important number? No, it means nothing, actually, Tommy. All it does, it means how far this stock has run. There's profit takers out there. There's some people uh, lightening their load before ahead of this massive event. So, no, doesn't, doesn't, you know, it's interesting. The one thing I is correlations and uh, relationships and during the streaming right look at the high on netflix right around 700 dollars. so it look it, it it wouldn't shock me a bit if people lightened up some of their load when it got up you know it got up as high as 746 so uh no not not surprising in the least bit i mean because look let's face it netflix is the clear winner in streaming and the stock just made it back over $500 lately from a low of 175 
uh, in, it might be the greatest chip stock ever, and the stock might be worth $400. We just don't know how this will play out over time. We don't know about competition. We don't know about demand being pulled forward. We don't know about winners and losers at AI. There's so many questions that haven't played out. Is the stock rich? Of course it is. You make some great points, man. I was jumping through Netflix, of course, as you were talking about that. Remarkable. You got to put it on a, you got to go back more than a year, man, which is just wild time. Yeah, when is that? The end of 2021, that high is. Time is just amazing, man. $700.99 um, on that Thinkorswim platform. And NVIDIA, I can't even see that pullback, basically. You put this thing on a weekly. It's been a straight shot, it looks like, almost from 100 to 700, which is remarkable. I was looking at some of the numbers they're looking for. Uh, revenue of over $20 billion profits of over 10 billion i said to myself somebody's got to be coming for them right that's quite a margin business doing 20 billion uh and taking in 10 billion to the bottom line but boy they got quite a head start it looks like on everybody and we find out after the bell uh we get some fed minutes as you mentioned but boy nvidia is going to be the main event what are you guys talking about on on fast market coming up at 12 o'clock today kevin well, here's what we're going to do, something we don't do very often, or ever, actually. We're going to do two segments on NVIDIA. So we're going to cover the bearish case with a bearish trade. Then we're going to cover the bullish case with a bullish trade. And then to wrap up, we'll cover maybe the only company that's out there really competing, and that's AMD. So we'll do two segments, two trades on nice. NVIDIA and an AMD trade today, Tommy. I like it, man. I can't wait to see what happens. And, boy, you talk about volatility. Uh, do you, I mean, this could reverberate around the whole industry, obviously, right? Because if the chips aren't flying, maybe everybody's not flying. Is this is this something where we should expect, you know, if you're especially in that heavy, you know, tech NASDAQ 100 or something like that, that you're just going to see everything rip in either direction if this thing moves? Or are you seeing some isolation in NVIDIA? Probably a, a, a pretty wide array of movement, depending on how NVIDIA goes. Or how do you look at that after the bell? Well, there, uh, there's a new developing AI sector that will all move. On NVIDIA since it's the lead dog in that pack. So, yeah, I expect that sector to move. I expect the Magnificent Seven to move, but in different levels of strength and, you know, and correlation. So, yeah, but I, will a market move? Yes, it will, of course. <laughs> I can't wait to see it, man. I can't wait to the pro watch the program at 12 o'clock as usual, Kevin. And uh, we'll know a lot more tomorrow when I talk to you at eight, uh, at 9 in the morning than we do today. Look forward to the program at 12, Kevin. Always appreciate the time on a busy morning, man. And we'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Always a pleasure. Folks, you heard it. Two segments. It does, I thought he was going to say three segments. I thought he was going to say we're doing all three because uh, you could do all three on the run that this has had, breaking it down, looking at the technicals. But, yeah, and check out AMD, right? Pretty comparable chart, man. This thing from 60 bucks to 184.92 you've backed off a bit you're negative with nvidia this morning you're trading at about 163 from 165.69 as of the close of yesterday but all of these equities right you put them on a weekly i mean you're just chopping around at basically all-time highs that we've been chopping around at for the last what four to six weeks you pull up nvidia shares on a weekly, you, I mean, you're just trading at, you know, last week's low. You're trading at last week's low, folks. And this thing has been trading like a moon for, what, you got to go back 16 months. We've been on a one-way trip. Yeah, 16 months. This is a weekly bar. We're going back to October of 2022. It is February of 2024. We did shop around for a period from about May until that second acceleration began in October. All right, that was your little consolidation, your B2C pullback. And then you take off, but yeah, um, I liked Kevin's answer. Means nothing, nothing, some selling. I would agree, right? We'll see what happens, man. Uh, as you got some selling right out of the gate, and I can't fault it. You know, you lighten up a little bit, whatever your risk tolerance may be, because yeah, um, we've seen, you know, if, if you learned anything during, you know, the COVID volatility or something like that, man, don't ever think you know more than the market, right? I mean, who would have ever thought that Netflix at 701 could have been trading at 162 by May when you were above 700 in November. No way. Do you know what kind of odds you would have needed to place a wager that Netflix would breach $200 by the April bar when you were pushing 700 in November? Don't think things can't happen that you, that that look like they can't. OK, and you saw it over and over. Right. Some of the greatest companies out there and the run Amazon has 
right? From 180 and change, you chopped around there. For more than a year, you were pushing 180 on Amazon, and boom, just like that, over 12 months, you trade down to 80 bucks a share. Great companies, okay? Outstanding companies. And yes, you've rebounded tremendously over that time. But eventually, all great stocks trade lower, folks, because you can only overperform a bar for so long that gets raised consistently, okay? Now, everybody's cherry picking the run it had from 100 to 700, but what I will say is, I remember having a little bit of regret that I didn't take some short positions when we came into the high, in NVIDIA in particular, okay? Because they started talking about that the future earnings per share just were bonkers. Well, guess what? That was at 325. We're at 700. You got it all back. Stay tuned, folks. Come back for the opening bell. Be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the stock market open, and we got the markets in negative territory. S&P's off by 13 right now. NASDAQ 100, slightly in the red by 139. We got the Dow right now negative by 42 points, and you got the Russell off by 10. Jumping back to some of the equities that will be in focus, we kick it off to NVIDIA, off by 2.3% to kick things off. Microsoft off by 8 tenths. Kevin mentioned AMD. They're off by 1.8%, continuing kind of the give back that you saw yesterday. 
Look at AMD on the sell-off, right? It was across the board, man. Everybody just kind of taking that money before the volatility comes in after the opening bell tonight. Now, you jump to some of the different news we had out there. Ah, forgive me. Where was I? We got a couple to pull up here. Yeah, we're going to take a look at Palo Alto in a second. Okay, I'll jump back. I had Amazon. So Amazon's joining the Dow. And what's interesting is, where I just had it, forgive me, folks. There we go. So Amazon's going to replace Walgreens in the Dow next week. And what's interesting is, okay, Walmart stock split pushed the company behind the Dow Jones Industrial Average to add Amazon and take out Walgreens Foods Alliance. You got to be in the right price range to get into the Dow, which is so interesting here because it's a price-weighted index, right? They can't put Chipotle Mexican Grill in there. Otherwise, all that would matter to the Dow would be Chipotle because it's a $3,000 stock. Amazon right now, what are you trading, 167 or something like that? Where were we? A-M-Z-N. 169.47. They catch a bid on the open. You're up by 1.5% in a negative market. But don't be swayed when you get into the Dow, okay? Be swayed when you get into the S&P, especially if you have a huge market cap where they have to represent you. At the end of 2019, I'm just cherry pick, and I've heard these numbers before, okay? This one I just looked up, so 2019, but it's going to give you a good idea. 11.2 trillion. Think about it. If this is 2019, what are these numbers right now? Nonetheless, this is going to be the comparison. 11.2 trillion dollars benchmark to the S&P 500. Okay, and that includes about almost five trillion passively tracking the index. Okay, in comparison, 32 billion benchmark to the Dow, with 28 billion in passive assets. Well, folks. You know, that 28 billion, we'll, we'll do 30. We'll do 30 billion for simple math, right? 30 billion is 3% of a trillion. It's 0.3% of 10 trillion. So it's literally like two tenths of 1% of the impact of the S&P 500. And it should be. Thank goodness that we don't have people benchmarking against the Dow versus the S&P 500 when it comes to diversification. Uh, but nonetheless, they're in the Dow Jones industrial. They're an industrial average. Um, yeah, Walmart had a three for one stock split. And yeah, that was going to be a big problem. Um, excuse me. Um, yeah, they had to get that expensive stock out of there. So you got Amazon up, you got Wal Walgreens boots a little bit lower. But pretty remarkable it's getting this type of a shift, okay? There is no benchmarking to the Dow, rightfully so. Walgreens boots off by 3.5. Maybe it's a stature thing, whatever it is. You were at 2240. Actually surprised to see that. Remember those numbers I just told you. So maybe a little bit of a reverberation. Uh, market getting a little bit of ahead of itself. It doesn't really matter if you're in the Dow. It probably does just for the reason that you're in the Dow. There's only 30 stocks in the Dow, right? The Dow's with the local news reports. But nonetheless, those equities are reacting this morning. Let's see how NVIDIA, they claw some of those losses back by 1.4%. You got to keep your your eye on just some of these equities, how they're going to behave ahead of this with the run they've had. Microsoft gives back 1.1% right now. Google shares, a different story. You're basically flat. And then how about Palo Alto Networks? Let's talk about this one. Is it P-A-N-W? Yes, it sure is. Yeah, it's not stopping, man. 26%. Whew. You talk about it, man. Look at this run, okay? Now, they're not making chips, okay? They're in cybersecurity, and they got a problem, to put it lightly. Can you hear me? You don't hear me? Uh, what's going on? No, Al? You should be getting me, pal. Yes? Okay. All right. I wasn't sure. Okay. Uh, I think everyone was hearing me, Al. I'm not sure. Palo Alto Networks, quite a drop-off. This is your weekly off by 25.5% on their numbers. We'll go over it, man. Look at this, right? 20, 2022, you're trading at 213 bucks. You're back to 271 from 380. I went off for a minute. Okay, I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, Palo Alto off by 25.5%. And checking out their numbers, it's all about guidance. They actually beat on the top and bottom line. And this is what is remarkable. And this is what this is what people who are not are not in the market would would be exacerbated to find out is that you know you beat 
you beat on the top and the bottom line. But, man, they got it. And they didn't guide to like some insane fashion but boy when you slow on growth and you're a growth company and the multiple start shrinking yes that was a big problem uh that was just chat gpt that i was using no spin that was just chat gpt gpt4 um which i'm sure that you can use it in other ones too it was the image creator plugin i think which is just the wally generator to some degree um yeah so check that out uh, so Palo Alto, right? They make a buck forty-six versus a dollar thirty. Revenue one point nine eight versus one point nine seven. Net income one point seven billion dollars for the ninety days, or four eighty-nine a share. Okay. Now here's the problem, though. They guided full year total billing ten point one to ten point two, compared to its previous of ten point seven to ten point eight. On the earnings side, full year. 795 versus $8 billion compared to maybe 8.15 to 8.2. So what they do, they shaved off about 600 million in revenue and they shaved off about 200 million going to the bottom line, okay? Lower guidance due to a shift in strategy wanting to accelerate growth, our platform migration and consolidation in activating AI leadership, adding the company expected a difficult customer as the company shifted stance, okay? I mean, that sounds like trying to throw AI into a spin session as to why you're missing on your forward guidance, right? I mean, I don't even know what that means. I mean, I, I can get it, okay? But you threw in AI, activating AI leadership, uh, accelerating growth. Well, if you're accelerating growth, a shift in strategy, wanting to accelerate growth, and so that's the reason why you're going to miss on revenue in the future and miss on earnings in the future. I don't know, right? New billings guidance represents full year growth, 10 to 11 versus 16 to 17. So there's the big one, right? If you're pricing in full year growth of 17% and then you got to recalibrate to 11, watch out. Yeah. Earnings 15 to 16% versus 18, point, 18 to 19. That's where things get bonkers, okay, in terms of the moves you can have. And remember that when we talked about the NVIDIA numbers, okay? NVIDIA is looking for $20 billion, 20.2 20 or something like that, right? What do we say? And they're looking for almost 10 billion to the bottom line. If you see deceleration of growth, which would result in deceleration of earnings, it's going to be a massive problem. You know, I don't necessarily think that's going to happen. I think this pro equity probably in the long run is going to make a lot of money and probably be fine. But who's to say you don't get a year consolidation, a two year consolidation, something like that. Um, somebody's going to be coming for their business, man. When they're making chips, taking their $20 billion and 10 of it's going right to the bottom line. AMD, what are those equities? But yeah, they're not going to have that monopoly forever, man, at those types of margins. So stay tuned, folks. We're coming back. We're going to be talking to our man, Teddy Kegstat. We'll talk some Forex. We'll talk some commodities. Don't go away, folks. We'll be back with Teddy. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. 
An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We've got the dollar index right now just above 104. We're trading at 104.06. You jump over to the S&P. It's pretty much where we kick things off, right? You're trading down right now 14 points or about three-tenths percent, trading at 49.77. We jump around to some of the equities that are trading right now. You look at NVIDIA down by 1.3 percent, and you jump back to the VIX right now, trading at 15.88. Let's talk about some of the market action, folks. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. Folks, you can check out Teddy's outstanding newsletter, the Tiger Forex Report. He puts out new issues every Monday morning with the market. He's got updates throughout the week when warranted. You can subscribe right here under the newsletters tab, folks. It's $97. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Uh, and with the way this market is moving, the way currencies are so important, uh, boy, looking forward to this conversation as always. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Boy, so we get some Fed minutes today, Teddy. Uh, we've had a little bit of volatility, but the, the last week, not as volatile as we've seen sometimes, but of course you got NVIDIA, the main event after the bell today. Uh, but where do you want to kick things off? Uh, I think, well, in 20 minutes, you got the uh, consumer confidence number for the EU. That's something I think that you have to kind of watch out for. Uh, obviously, the euro is one of the biggest components of the dollar index. So if consumer confidence comes out unexpectedly different, I think you could see a little shakeup because the currencies have been kind of flat the, the past couple of days. Like as a whole, it's kind of a dull week. You know, I mean, if you're trading intraday, like most of the moves that you, if you didn't catch them in the early morning, they fizzled out before anything else, you know, anything, you know, really manifested the rest of the day, you know, so I wouldn't hit my expectations. I think you got to keep kind of small, you know, probably until uh, Thursday and Friday, especially because we'll see what the consumer confidence number comes out for uh, EU. If that shakes up the euro, it should get the dollar to even move a little bit. And if that does happen, maybe it starts to get yields to move. But as a whole, you haven't seen much action with yields. You haven't seen much with the um, with the dollar or even most of the currency crosses. I mean, you're seeing small trends, but as a whole, the volatility is very tight. So I would watch out for that. And then we have unemployment claims, you know, on uh, tomorrow morning also. That's a number we need to watch, you know, because right now we see inflation is ticking back with numbers. So if we see unemployment claims going down and not up, that's another thing that push, pushes dovishness away from us. And then we also have, um, what is it, existing home sales on Friday, I believe, also. So that's another number you have to watch out for because we know what the, the last number did with the building permits last week. So we can see possibly see a shakeup in yields after that number. So today at 9 o'clock <clears throat> Central Standard Time, 10 a.m. your time, and then also watch out for tomorrow around uh, 7.30 and then also Friday at 7, around 9 o'clock as well. That was a good, pretty quick wrap up, man, going jumping around. And it is interesting in terms of because, you know, I'm always getting ready, looking forward to talking to you on Wednesdays at 40 past the hour. And we've been spoiled with the types of moves we've been getting because over the, since the last time I talked to you, I was like, oh, this isn't like it usually is where we got rip roaring rallies in one way or the right. other, kind of digesting some of that maybe um, for sure. the last week or so. You know, sure. you always put some great price levels in your newsletter in terms of just areas you're looking at. And for the dollar right now, we're just above 104. As I mentioned, mm -hmm. we do get Fed minutes. Is that something that you follow, that you look for potential volatility on a day like today, especially for the currencies? Not Are you really. Looking for some Not really? Not okay. Not really, no. See, you know what? I mean, w w honestly, what do you think they're going to come out and shockingly say? I mean, like, oh, we're going to start getting dovish in May. You know, after the numbers that we've had, that, if anything, they're not going to say anything. You know, they're sure. just going to keep things, those things the way they are, the status quo, be like, yeah, we'd like to tell you that we're going to cut, start cutting rates, but we still have inflation signs that we have to 
be on, you know, yeah. and all indicators are lagging. Now, it's kind of funny, you know, those that get the Tiger Forex report, you notice that like the yen is hovering on the 150 level in the, with the BOJ. That's been a number we've constantly talked about. It's just hanging there. Then you have like the British pound. It's hanging on a directional pivot level. It's a monthly level that we've been working off of for months. And it's, now it's just like hanging on it, you know. Mm -hmm. So the fact that these big monthly pivot levels that were just gravitated to, we're kind of seeing the, the median average now for the markets, like they stabilized to that medium. So the question is, is now when is the rubber band going to shoot up or down to start a new trend? You know, and I nice. think right now, until we see some economic indicators that are totally non-inflationary and in a big way, I mean, it's tough. We have the stock market on its highs. Um, you want to you want to fuel it more by cutting interest rates? You know, you how you're trying. I mean. If you want to keep us out of a recession and have the supposed soft landing or whatever, um, you're just creating a bubble, you know. So I think that right now the Fed's going to be pretty quiet. You know, the expectations of, cut, you know, cutting rates, <laughs> I don't care what side of the fence you're on, um, you're going to probably be lucky to see a cut in earliest June, you know, especially if over the next couple of weeks, you know, once what, what happens if in March we see a much lower unemployment number and then we see a higher CPI and PPI number next month? Do you think they're going to be cutting rates in May? No, it's not happening. Yeah. This is not going to happen, you know, but we are in this kind of sideways period. So, I mean, I, I have to tell you, if you're a swing trader, be very careful. Wait for your signals right now. You have to really be disciplined in your trading. You know, don't, don't let the market come to you. Don't force a trade because if you are, you're over trading and you're going to lose money. That's period. That's just how that's, it's gonna that's work a great out. point to think about on a constant basis, man. Having that patience because we all want to make that trade, man. Find that trade. Sure. Um, and and yeah, sometimes the the best trade is no trade for sure. Right. And this is coming from a floor guy. Believe me, I'll sell anything. <laughs> I don't care. It's not right. that way. You know. So uh, it, yes. believe me, discipline, keeping your hands down and your mouth shut is something. It's a hard thing to do, but. That's how you make money, you know. You have to be there, especially now if you're going to fight the machines. And you know, it's it's a great point. I was reading one analyst uh, at some point. I think it was around the last Fed meeting or maybe the CPI numbers they were talking about. And it was just one take, but it resonated with me. And they, they I forget who had mentioned it. It was just some analyst on Wall Street. But they're saying basically, with all this data, you know, the only case really here for cutting is people who are basically stuck in some recency bias that we deserve to be at zero because otherwise, why would you ever be cutting when the market's basically on fire? You still have inflation. The only reason is because we kind of think that that's how we need to go, that somehow we're mm -hmm. like, we went up and now we have to go right back down. And maybe that's just not the case. If we weren't so low for so long, sure. maybe many participants wouldn't have this idea that we have to go right back down just as right. quick because the, the data is just, I just thought it was a great point. Um, in terms of how much we're all impacted by how low they were for so long. But if you actually look like you were talking about, mm -hmm. which is why I appreciated those points, because it, it lines up, it does. Uh, let's talk a little bit of crude if we could. So we'll be, sure. we back off um, kind of that $78 area. As I mentioned it, though, we're up a little bit, yep. uh, 77 and change. But we've kind of, you know, we've been talking about this area. Now we've bumped up here a couple times. We're backing off. We're right at that kind of $77, $78 price point. What are you looking for that crude market? You know, right now, I... I think you're going to keep on pressuring resistance right now. I think that if you can get above this $78 and close above that, then we're going to head up into that like $81 to $83 range. Um, I, it's right now, you're making higher move highs and higher move lows. I mean, granted, the past week has been relatively sideways, but still, until you make a lower move low after a higher move high, it's hard to be neutral, let alone bearish. You know, you need a signal, you know, and until you until you have a confirmation, well, you're it's the direction is going to be edging towards, you know, the ceiling versus the floor, sure. you know. So, I mean, all I know is gas prices <laughs> around Chicagoland are, you know, 75 cents to a dollar higher than they were just a month and a half ago. But then yeah. there was also there was also the problem with the refinery in Indiana, the big, uh, you know, okay. accident that happened. So but still, yeah. you know. Oh, I've seen the slide here for sure, as in higher prices for sure. You notice mm -hmm. it now because right. it's been so remarkably low, I think, for so long. When we're flirting with the two dollar handle on the sure. price of gas, you can't help but when you know you see it rising to three fifty or whatever it is, just like that. And that's inflationary too. You know, that's something that Oof. the Fed has to be watching that. You know, we're coming oh, yeah. into the, the summertime switch for when the refinery switched the grade of you know gas to begin with, which brings prices up. You know, so you're looking at inflationary pressures no matter what on the average person. For the next three to sure. four months, and this is yeah. coming into an this is an election year too, so yeah. we'll see. Could be a lot. We of will see.
We will see. Teddy, I appreciate the time as always, man. Folks, check out the Tiger Forex Report. And don't forget, Teddy's got a couple of outstanding webinars. You go to the Services tab. We're always talking charts. We're talking candlesticks. He's got his candlestick pattern, stock and option strategies out there. And he's got his cal capitalizing on time with calendar stock option spreads. Uh, Teddy, thanks so much as always, man. Look forward to talking to you next week. Have a great one. Take care, Tommy. Take care. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors the reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades at TFNN we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news that's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets right now in negative territory, slightly lower than where we were at the open. You got the S&Ps off by about 16 right now, trading at 49.75. You see kind of bumping up where we were at about 8.30. You did rise into the open a bit. You're only talking about five points in the S&Ps. Jump over to the NASDAQ. We're negative by about eight tenths percent, 140 points in the red. Checking in on the Dow, you slide slightly lower. Off 140 points, we check in on NVIDIA, head of their main event. Down by 2.1% right now, giving back some of the gain that they've had. But boy, as I mentioned, you put this thing on a longer-term chart, you can almost barely see that pullback. Jump over to Amazon. They're in the Dow. They catch a little bit of a lift, up by 1.4%. We check in on Palo Alto Networks. Yeah, I'd stay away from that one today, man. When you got growth companies, right, that see their growth go from 16% to 10%, you start multiplying that out in future years, man, in terms of how that is priced into the price of that equity. And, uh, yeah, you see a 26% cut overnight. You jump over to the Analyze tab. Excuse me. This company, you're talking about a company still valued at $85 billion, but pretty remarkable 
you can have companies that large lose 26% of their market cap overnight. I mean, you've got people in this equity in margin, man. Whew, if you're in margin, you better watch out in terms of what you could possibly lose there. That is quite a reaction, to put it lightly. And folks, don't forget, you know, I mentioned we're always, I always look forward to talking to Teddy. He does have a couple great webinars up here. And under the services tab, right, we get the Tigers down. We always got Tiger dollars available over there as well. But don't forget, we got a lot of great webinars over there. I always talk about Teddy's when I talk to him, okay, capitalizing on time with calendar stock option spreads with Teddy. Japanese candlestick patterns, stock and option, option strategies with our man Teddy. Teddy's written a book on candlestick patterns, folks, okay? Both of those webinars, only 97 bucks, you get them. The archive, you can check it out as many times as you want. Our man Tim Ward, he's on with my dad Tuesdays and Thursdays. I was listening to his program. Uh, was it yesterday? Was it last night? It was. It was last night. Um, yeah. He was sounding a little bullish, man. They were talking about potentially a run till August. Six secret ratios every trader should know. The secret science of market tops with Tim Ward, 149. If you want to check out my dad's timing of the trade webinar, folks, all day webinar, you get the book included, 295. Check out those webinars under the services tab as well. Folks, thanks so much for kicking on off. Stay tuned for our man Basil Chapman. We'll see how those NVIDIA earnings pan out after the bell. Have Are a great you